Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Endless OS 4.0 has been released and I was thinking of making a video, but then I received news that Elementary OS's Cassidy James has joined Endless OS. And without further ado, we're gonna dive right in. So what is Endless OS? Well, it's an operating system based on Debian. And if you can kind of guess looking at these icons, then yes, it is using the GNOME desktop environment. So this is the screen that you get on first boot. And yes, the wallpaper is familiar to some of you. Well, then you have used elementary OS. All right. So at the left is your show apps. So this, if you have any apps open, this will show the apps or it will take you back to your desktop. It functions as both. At the bottom, you have your taskbar or your panel, as Linux people like to call it. And you have quite a few pinned apps, namely App Center, Hack, Chromium, and GNOME Files, or Nautilus. On the right, this is your network connection. So wired connections and automatic updates are, I guess, turned on. And this is your volume slider. This is your date and time. As you can see, some of the apps have already gotten updated because automatic updates was turned on. This is your calendar and you can set do not disturb. So this is kind of like a modified GNOME experience. Now this is my user account. So this is my name, uh, settings, social accounts, give us feedback, lock, power off or log out. And this button is for enabling hot corner. I am not a huge fan of hot corners, so I'm gonna let it be. All right, so unlike typical desktop Linux operating systems where the wallpaper, the time you log in is generally clean, unless you're a monster and you put desktop icons or folders, you generally don't have this. So this is more like an iPhone where you don't have an app drawer and a separate desktop, but you get the two of these integrated into one space. So let's go through these apps one by one. I'm not going to be going through all of these, but let's just dive right in. So first up is hack. Oh, so if you hover over these apps, they show you a little dialog box explaining what they do and with a beautiful artwork. So Endless Hack is a, is a new learning platform from Endless focused on teaching the foundations of programming and creative problem solving to kids ages 10 and up. Well, seems, seems fun. Let's open and see what it is. Now you might know, you might see the animations are not the best because this is running inside of VM. Sorry, I have I have only one machine and I can't install these operating systems right now. So yeah, you're gonna have to make do with this. So you have games for from Ada, from Estelle. You have art. This is an on-off button. Okay, okay. Who just turned the lights off? It's so dark in here. I can barely see my hand in front of my face. Very funny. Okay, you have Seniel for operating systems. Favor is the maker, fabricator. Riley for web. Let's go to Seniel for operating systems. I'm not going to go through all of these. Let it snow. A trip to the archives. Touring the system. Command line cat and mouse. Okay, command line cat and mouse. What you'll do, start learning about the command line, the most powerful tool on any computer, part one of four. <laughs> hey, Honored Bond, Ada's always saying we should search out new things to do, so I want to try teaching you some tricks in the terminal. <laughs> the terminal is Mondo Cool. It's where the real magic in the OS happens. You know those scenes in movies where they hack into computer systems? That's supposed to look like the terminal. I'm going to teach you the real stuff, though. Just a couple of things before we start. When I do text like this, it's important. <laughs> text like this is a command, so something you could type into the terminal. Pay close attention to the spelling, capitalization, and spacing. The terminal is very picky. Uh, yeah, I know. Also pay attention to the results of what you type. If there is an error, you probably mistyped something. Fair enough. <laughs> Okay, so it opens up the terminal for us. And as you can see, this is the GNOME terminal. Let's get started. I'll open the terminal for you. Thank you. <laughs> nice. See that text on the left there? That's called the prompt. All we need to worry about right now is the part after the colon. So after the colon, because it tells you where you are in the file system. Yeah. So you can do something like PWD and you can see where you are if you know your way around the terminal. Anyway, well, if I wasn't making a video, I would have been stuck in this part for an entire day. So let's 
let's not get stuck in here and let's move ahead um, through the video, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to be stuck in here for a long time. This sounds like a really fun thing to do on your spare time, especially if you're young. I think you would love this kind of activities. Also, you have Chromium, so your generic open source Chromium that everybody bases their browsers on. This is your GNOME files, so if I click on files, and if I go to about section, as you can see, this is an older version of GNOME, so this is 3.38, so yeah, not the latest. And also, if you noticed, uh, this is a modified minimize, maximize, and close buttons. These are not there in default GNOME like these. I believe these are modified, but they look great. So yeah, no complaints. I love having the three buttons. Video player shot well for pictures, rhythm box for music, system and sidetrack. Well, let's pick one of these. So let's click on sidetrack and let's see what it does. Oh, I guess this is another game. Okay. Space bar to... But that was fun. Okay, now we're gonna go through settings a little bit and find out more about our operating system. So under settings, let's quickly go to the about section. Oops, it's in applications. So as you can see, beautiful logo, endless OS. This is an infinity or an infinite infinity logo, which has been cut, I guess that's what it is. Uh, endless, uh, as you can see the device name and this is 64 bit. Of course, the GNOME version is 3.38.5, and we are using X11. Okay, so interesting. Uh, everybody nowadays pushes for Wayland, but you always have the option to switch over to X11. And sticking with X11 is not bad either, because sometimes when your things don't work in Wayland, people generally switch back to X11. So no complaints from me there. Whenever Wayland will be ready, I'm sure they would also integrate it within their system. Oh, and another thing, one of the things that makes it different from a Debian or Ubuntu based system is that the apps that you will find in the App Center, they're all flat packs. So this uses OS tree plus flat packs. This is kind of like your Steam OS, your Fedora Silverblue, where you only can install flat packs. And I think, well, if you can't find everything that you want in a, as a flat pack, I think you will find 90 to 95% of the apps that people normally use as a flat pack. So mm, I think this looks a little bit different from how GNOME software used to look earlier in the day. Let's go to about and yeah, this is GNOME software center. This is the earlier version. Well, I'm not sure how it looked earlier because now we're on GNOME 42 and this is it looks kind of different, but this is in no way bad. You have big tiles. You have a featured section. You have a learning section. And I love big tiles, man. I mean, I can easily see what it is. I get a, I get a, I get a small icon. I get a gradient. Well, I can't complain. Let's click on something. So G. Compris, compris. I don't know how you say it. Okay, we got a screenshot. We got a little description, and we have a few details. So it's as you can see, it says dl.flathub.org. So these are FlatHub packages and don't worry about the sizes because once you download the FlatHub runtime, uh, you won't be downloading huge MBs of data for your software, unlike app images where you have like everything is contained in one file. So a lot of duplication occurs if you're if you're downloading app images. Well, here are some reviews. We're not going to go through them. Obviously, this is, that wasn't the point of entering this so you also have explore so this is this is the tab that we're in you have installed you have updates so as you can see i have two more apps to update but i'm not going to bother with them automatic updates is on i don't believe seeing this ever in gnome software but i could be wrong so yeah i mean it looks it looks like a bad c <laughs> it looks like a bad html link with no css on it Anyways, I'm not going to complain. Automatic updates is on. It's fine. It also should have a newer kernel. So we haven't checked the kernel number. Let's quickly go to the terminal. 
and check the kernel number. So 5.11, exactly not the latest, but so you don't you don't want to use this with your Alder Lake systems, but 5.11, fairly recent. It's okay for everyday tasks. If you're an if you are an NVIDIA graphics user, I guess you're you'd be installing the NVIDIA drivers. If you are on an AMD or Intel graphics card system, I guess you would need to look into upgrading your kernel if you want to, if you know how to do it. Or otherwise, you could just let it be. I don't think performance is going to differ very much depending on which kernel you pick, as long as it's not too old, like 5.4 or something. So anyways, guys, with that, we come to the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.